do what only yes, he can hallelujah. this morning. Amen. Amen. Bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you, Lord. We rejoice. We lift your name on high today, Father. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for the, the, the cross. We thank you, Father, for the journey of Holy Week, Father, that you took, Father, for our yes. sin and for everything, Lord God, that you took on and bore, Father, for us, Jesus. We thank you today, Lord. We celebrate you, Father. We, we call you King. We, we claim you as our righteous King and as our Lord of Lords today, Father God. We lift your name on high, Lord, on this Palm Sunday, Lord. We celebrate you and we say, Hosanna, Hosanna. Worthy is the King who lives on high. And we thank you today, Lord. It's in your name we pray, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.
this morning. I mean, you know, he didn't have to do it, but he did it. Because he loves you so much. And he had you on his mind. Amen. He bore it all on the cross of Calvary. And today, Father, we say welcome into our hearts and to our lives today, God. With all that we are, we give you the glory.
we're going to focus our attention.
goodness. So I was, I was resurrected in the spirit on Easter morning, just as Jesus was resurrected from the dead. Amen. And that same Jesus and that same spirit lives in me and I know lives in you today. So we know, amen, all three nights today, next week, amen, on Easter morning, amen, we're going to have a powerful time celebrating the resurrection of our King and our Lord, amen. So we encourage you, don't don't let your family stay home. Don't let your relatives miss out. Amen. And if they're too, you know, they're sick in body, they can't make it, they're, they have schedule conflicts, well, then share the, the, the live stream with them. Share it with them. Let them hear the word of God. Let them be impacted by the word of God because the word of God, our words, will fall to the ground. But the Bible says that his words will never fail. His word is everlasting to everlasting. Amen. So today, amen, we encourage you on this Holy Week to be here, be with us, amen, not only in spirit, but he, be here in presence, because it is an encouragement, not just for us, but for your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, amen, as well. So without any further ado, we're going to pray and believe, amen, for your seed this morning. We're going to pray and trust that God has spoken to you, amen, on what to sow and what to give today, amen. So together, let's bow our heads and let's bless your giving this morning. Father, we honor you right now, Lord, and by way of giving, Lord, we honor, Father God, the, the very thing, Father, that you've allowed us to have to manage, Lord. And that's all we are as managers. Lord, you are the CEO of every resource that we have and we attain right now, Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that your, your the abilities, the, the, the God-given abilities you've given each of us, Lord, is to bring honor to you, is to is to be recognizing that, Lord, it is you that blesses us with those giftings and those talents, Lord, to put food on the table, to put a roof over our head. Lord, whatever need your people have today, we count it met today, Jesus. We call it met in the name above every name, Lord. As they step in faith, Lord, trusting you, you will supply every need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, church. God bless you today as you give. Hallelujah. God bless you, church, as you come forward and give. And as you uh, give your offerings to the Lord this morning, why don't you just look at somebody next to you and tell them, you look real good for Palm Sunday. Come on, just go around and greet somebody. Love on your brother, love on your sister.
no miss next Sunday. But as my wife said, you know, she does such a good job announcing it, but I just want to reemphasize it. This is Holy Week. This is what it's all about, church. This is, our, this is the anchor of our faith. This is the anchor of our soul. We're going to have special songs this week. Um, we got a special uh, ministers that are going to be ministering. They're right here in our local church. Uh, Wednesday night, and Brother Michael Mata is going to be bringing the word. We're going to start us off. Thursday night, and Mr. Edward Garcia is going to share a few words of the cross. We're breaking down the seven saints, and then from Dallas, Texas, we have our brother who's been a member of our church and still considered a member of our church today. They give, they tithe, they support. We're talking about Brother Adam and Cassandra Mortis, and they're going to be joining us on Friday. And they might be here earlier, too. They were thinking about coming a little bit earlier. But we're going to have a good time. They're going to stay with us on the weekend. We're going to have a good time. And then if you allow me, I'm going to come back on Easter and preach again. If that's okay with you. Praise God. But uh, we're so thankful that you're here with us today. Um, if you're like me, you already got you already got your Sunday Easter suit ready. I, I, I'm, I'm already ready. Amen. And uh, But you can come casual all week long. Or, um, you know, someone asked me what's the dress code. I'm going to be kind of semi-casual, me personally. I'm not going to maybe wear a suit or a tie the week. But Sunday I will. But if you want to just come, however you want to. Uh, but how many don't know that uh, God looks at your heart more than anything? Right. He looks at your heart. Amen. But, uh, but go ahead and dress for success. Praise God. And uh, it's good to be in church. Amen. This Sunday morning. So come ready. It's going to be good this week. We're going to also have prayer tomorrow at 7. And uh, we're going to kick it off because I believe that there is power in prayer. There is power in prayer. How many of are a living witness and a testimony that God is a God who answers prayer? Can I get a witness on that? Hallelujah. You know, we've been praying on prayer. Last Monday night, we held hands together. And we prayed, and um, and a brother told me after, uh, he said, Pastor, thank you for praying, because I had mentioned his family, and that they were in a car accident, and uh, and God protected them all. They went to the hospital, but thank God that nothing bad happened to them. They're back home now, right? And so, how many know God answers prayer? Good to see Brother Eddie and his wife, Linda. We haven't seen them in a long time. We're so happy that you joined us today. Stand to our feet this Sunday morning, and uh, I feel a little cool. I don't know if y'all can adjust the temperature a little bit. And our little ones uh, can be dismissed to the back. Again, thank you, Sister Esther, for teaching our little ones. Uh, if we have any little ones, uh, you are welcome to go back there in the safe hands of uh, our Sister Esther, and they do a great job. Amen. Let's thank the Lord for Sister Esther. Amen. Amen. She's doing a great job. Amen. Now, uh, we're going to go ahead and do this before I get preaching. Brother Roy, are you ready? Okay. All right. We're going to give everyone, adults here today, and I just want to give you just a little word of uh, uh, just housekeeping notes, is uh, we're going to be giving you right now your own personal palm branch. Amen. All right. So the brother's going to distribute it to you today. We just ask that you don't hit nobody with it. I uh, know some of y'all are already thinking about it. I'm going to, I'm going to hit somebody. No, 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 no. Uh, but um, as they pass you out, you can use them in the message today because there's going to be moments where I'm going to need your help. I'm going to point to you and I'm going to say, wave those palm branches. Amen. So we want to uh, uh, just give you one. And then uh, this is what it's all about right here. For those of you who don't know, today is what the world knows and Christendom as Palm Sunday. And as you know, Palm Sunday was when the day, you can put one up here for me, thank you, sir. And uh, Palm Sunday is known as the time when Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem on a donkey. And what did they do? The crowd that day, they were waving palm branches. So we're going to practice. Let's go ahead and just wave it. Now you can do it the way you want to do it. That's right. That's right. And uh, you're not going to bother me today by waving your palm branch. Amen. Because that's what they were doing that day. The first ever Palm Sunday. It was on a Sunday. And uh, it was kicked off with palm branches. So, if you're able to, let's stand right, remain standing for just a few moments. And I'm going to begin preaching. I want us to go to the Word today. If you have your Bibles, to the book of John. The Gospel according to John, chapter 12. Man, love I mean, I really love Jesus. Today. Amen. I'll tell you what, it's beautiful. What else would we do, man? There's nothing else more beautiful than serving Jesus. Praise God. So, we look in John 12, verse 12. John 12, verse 12. John 
chapter 12, but verse 12. The Bible says the next day, a great multitude that had come to the feast, when they had heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. Look at verse 13. They took branches of palm trees. That's what you got in your hand right there. That's what they took. Palm branches, in other words. And they went out to meet him. And they cried out. We sang it earlier. Hosanna, which means save us right now. That's what they were saying. Save us, Lord, this very moment. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Yes. And Jesus, when he had found that young donkey, sat on it as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's coat. Can the church say amen this morning? Amen. So this morning, I want to preach for just a few moments, kicking off this Holy Week, this Palm Sunday. I know we're going to have a blessed week. And I'm telling you what, I'm the least of all these ministers and these men of God that are going to be speaking this week. But I just want to jump started by talking tonight or today, this morning, and those of you watching by Facebook, however time you watch it, maybe some of you go back and, you know, just watch it again and get blessed again. Because we're going to talk today about the spirit of submission, the spirit of submission on this Palm Sunday. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the reading of this, your holy word. We pray, oh God, that we do no violence to your holy scriptures and that you hide me, Lord, again behind that cross and allow me to speak as the very oracles of God, as a man full of faith and fire and of the Holy Spirit of the living God. We will be careful, Lord God, to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. For, Lord, we are nothing without you, Lord. We are empty without you. We cannot do anything, Lord, without you. Thank you, God, for waking us up today in our right mind, in our right spirit, and our right soul. And, Lord, I pray according to Acts 2, 41, that this will be a word received gladly in every heart, every life, and every soul, and that you would add to the church as such you to be saved. It is in Jesus' mighty name, and everyone said, amen. amen and amen. You may be seated. Somebody just break that palm branch one more time. Amen, and you can be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't ever say you never got nothing from Pastor. <laughs> amen. <laughs> you got a palm branch from me today, all right? So, you know, I, I love what the late Dr. Billy Graham, he's with the Lord now. But I love that great evangelist, that man of God, who probably won more souls to the Lord uh, in this uh, generation than any other evangelist. And uh, I love what he said about submission. That's going to be my theme this morning. We're going to talk about the spirit of submission because the Palm Sunday story and, and uh, narrative has so much to do with the heart and the spirit of submission. Now, look, listen to what Billy Graham said. He said, and I quote, he said, submission involves getting rid of everything which hinders God's control over our very lives. Let me say that again. He said, submission involves getting rid of everything which hinders God's control over our very lives. Sometimes when we talk about submission, people kind of get a negative connotation and a, a, a negative mindset because they think, oh, it's just bossing I'm not going to let nobody boss me, you know. You don't tell me what to do, you know. And it really has nothing to do with authority. Right. Submission is not about authority. It's about love and respect. Amen. See, authority is not the problem. The problem is our stubbornness Amen. and our pride and our rebellion. I can't get no help in here this morning. That's the problem. The problem is not submission because guess what? In this world, in this life, we're all submitted to something or someone. I don't care if you're a boss. I don't care if you got your own company. I don't care if you're working for somebody. I don't care where you are, whether you're a parent, whether you're a grandparent, whether you're a CEO, whether you're an investor, whether you're a school teacher, whether you're a bus driver, whether you're a husband, whether you're a wife, whether you're a daughter, whether you're a son, whether you're a child, it doesn't matter. We all must engage in the spirit of submission. Amen. Chuck Swindoll, one of the great Bible teachers that helped me so much when I was beginning the ministry, and, uh, and my wife listens to him too practically every day. Chuck Swindoll says, and I quote, he says, we all have these things that we must bear daily. Mm. Notice, we all have things, he said, in our lives that we must bear daily, but there's something beautiful, he said, about submitting to the cross. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. There's something beautiful yes. yeah. about the spirit of of submission. Yeah. Now, today, as you know, we are celebrating yes. 
what is known throughout Christianity and even the world as Palm Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Why do we call it Palm Sunday? Yeah. We call it Palm Sunday because in that crowd of maybe some quite possibly Bible scholars tell us 300,000 tourists that came to the Jewish festival, a week-long Jewish festival at that time, which consisted of basically three major or great feasts. The Feast of Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the Feast of the First Fruits. Those are the three major feasts that were going on during this week-long festival or celebration. And the Bible said that they had heard about the miracles and the signs and the wonders that Jesus had manifested. The fame and the, and, the, and the recognition of Jesus had spread so far throughout all that known world that people said they had heard that Jesus was going to be in the city of Jerusalem. Mm. That he was near. In fact, he was staying near about just a few miles away from Jerusalem before he rides into that town on a donkey. And so they had heard of the miracles. In fact, the latest miracle that they heard that really caused an uproar was when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Come on. And he only said three words. Lazarus, come forth. Yes. And you know why he said Lazarus, come forth? Because if he would have just said, come forth, everything that was dead would have come alive. Amen. So we have to say, no, just Lazarus for right now. Lazarus, levantate. Get up. Hallelujah. And word had spread of that miracle. The chief priests were angry. In fact, they not only wanted to, to kill Lazarus because they wanted to do away with that miracle. And that's how you know Jesus is real. You want to know how Jesus is real? I can tell you because he changes lives. Amen. Jesus changes lives. Amen. Let me encourage you, church. Share your faith with somebody this Holy Week. Share your faith to someone that needs Jesus. You say, but pastor, I don't know what to say. I don't have all the right scriptures. I don't have all the right verses. I don't know all the chapters. But if you've been changed by the power of God, right. all you need to do is share your testimony. Yeah. Look what the Lord has yeah. done yeah. for me. Yeah. Because we can argue religion, but you can't argue a changed life. Right. Yeah. Just share what God did for you. Uh -huh. Just share how you were bound by sin and bound by darkness. But the Lord Jesus Christ set you free by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Talking this morning about the spirit of submission. So today is what is called Palm Sunday. And it was actually the first day that would be the final week, the last week that Jesus is on earth, leading to the death and the burial and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. But why these palm branches? Do y'all want to just wave it one more time? All right. Why do we focus today on the palm branches and I'm just going to hit on it for just a moment I want to just give you a little bit of education just so you'll know see about 200 years before Christ came riding on the donkey in the town of or the city of Jerusalem uh, your Bible says that 200 years before that that people the Jewish people had a custom they looked at these palm branches as a sign it represented something you know what it did it represented freedom and independence. Everybody say freedom. freedom. And everybody say independence. independence. That's right. So at this time, during the days of Jesus, the, the Jewish people were under the Roman Empire. They were under Roman domination and control. So this was kind of an act of faith. When they would get these palm branches, anytime the children of Israel, the people of God, the Jewish race, when they would feel oppressed by the Romans now and other enemies that they were under before, they would wave these palm branches mm, as a sign of sin. That's right. Some of y'all knew it. Amen. They would wave these palm branches. You know what they were doing? Under Roman control, they were saying, one day, one day, we're going to be liberated. One day, we're going to be set free. One day, the chains are going to be broken. One day, hallelujah, I'm getting out of Egypt and we're getting into the promised land. 
Hallelujah. So I want you to know today that the palm branch represents freedom. It represents liberty. It represents that. You know what, devil? You might be attacking me right now. You might be hitting me to the right and to the left. But I'm going to be free. Hallelujah. Because he that the Son is set free is free indeed. Come on, somebody give God praise. Every time they would wave those palm branches, it was a sign of saying, one day, we will be liberated. Amen. And also, you know what they use those palm branches on? In their coins, in their money. In the Jewish coins back then, they had the image of, you guessed it, a palm branch. A palm branch was embedded. It was engraved in their coins. The palm branch, because it was like they were saying when they would do currency, when they would do, uh, you know, exchange in their in their finances and the economy. It was the it was it was it was like they were saying we're going to be free. We might be poor right now, but we're going to walk in prosperity. Hallelujah. And I came out to encourage somebody this Palm Sunday, hallelujah, that you might be suffering right now. Right. You might be struggling a little bit right now, and, 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 and you're, you're trying to catch up. Maybe you lost some hours, and, and maybe you lost a job, and, and maybe you got laid off. But I came out to tell you, keep looking to the palm branch. Keep looking to Jesus. Yeah. Keep looking to yeah. the cross. Hallelujah. Because God is going to restore your finances. Yeah. God is going to restore yes, Everything that the devil has stolen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Glory. One day, they knew they were going to be set free. And so when they were waving those palm branches, here we find now uh, two of the disciples are, are commissioned by Jesus to go to a village opposite you and go find a donkey. Go find a donkey that has never been set on by anybody. And you get this young donkey and, and you bring it to me. And if anybody asks, why are you taking this young donkey? You just tell him the Lord has need of him. I came out to tell somebody, the Lord has need of you. The Lord still wants to use you. Hallelujah. When you walk through a time of failure, when you go through a, a time of disappointment, when you experience loss, God is not trying to replace you. My God is trying to restore you. My God is trying to renew you. My God is trying to refill your cup to overflowing. Hallelujah. So we find that these two disciples, more than likely, Bible scholars tell us it was Peter and John. Tradition says that it was Peter and John. And, and then they go out and they find that donkey. And of course, the owners come to them and they say, why are you taking it? He's like, because the Lord needs it. Right. No questions asked. And Jesus begins to, they prepare that donkey. They, they put some clothes on that donkey. And, and, and Jesus gets on that donkey and he rides into the city of Jerusalem. Uh, coming near the Mount of Olivet, which was the same place that he would pray his final prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. Not my will, but your will be done. Amen. That's where we get that verse where Jesus said, watch and pray, but the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Right. Yes. And so near that Mount Olivet, he comes down with the Bible calls the, the descent. And, and I've seen it. I was one time um, we were given a... Uh, an invitation from a member of our church, not this church, but the church I was serving uh, years ago on the South Side, I and Judah. And, and I remember there was a wonderful, beautiful couple uh, that blessed my pastor and I to go to Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Anybody been to Eureka Springs, Arkansas? In Eureka Springs, Arkansas, they have what is called a Holy Land replica. Right. A Holy Land replica. It's like a it's like a scene that they have, kind of like a little village, a little area there, like a, you would see like SeaWorld or Fiesta, Texas. And it was like a park, but it was all, it all looked like Israel. And so we were blessed to go, my pastor and I. And the reason I remember it so well was because I had to get special permission to go because I had just got married. I was, I was still kind of fresh on my honeymoon, you know, and I remember going, I said, honey, is it okay? She said, I guess. No, I'm just kidding. So I went, and, uh, and we had a good time, and I remember seeing that scene. Oh, it was beautiful. We saw the passion of Christ. We saw all the different drama. It's like a drama uh, of, of the acts of, Jesus, of the Holy Week, of the times when Jesus, you know, uh, was about ready to die. And they showed that scene. I'll never forget it. They showed that scene. And I remember watching it. Man, we were just amazed how, how they had Jesus on that donkey. He was coming down. It was kind of like a hill. He was coming down a descent, the Bible calls it. And that's what happened. And so the crowd is there. Like I said, 300,000 people about 
They were there from all over that known world, not just in the city of Jerusalem, but they had heard, as I told you, they heard about that re resurrection of Lazarus. They heard about the blind man healer. They heard about all the miracles and they were, and they were enamored by the teachings of Jesus. And they wanted to see him for themselves. For those many of them, the majority of the 300,000 people that were there, the tourists, that was, this was going to be the first time to see Jesus face to face. Mm -hmm. The first time many of them would see Jesus. And so they take out the palm branches. The Bible says some of them. And John, John's the only account. In fact, by the way, this story of uh, Palm Sunday, also called the triumphal entry, is mentioned in all four of the synoptic gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You can go home and do your homework. I'm going to touch on a few scriptures. But here in this account, in John 12, 12, this is the only time the writer, John, uses the word palm trees. These were specifically branches called palm, from palm trees. All right? Now, we got these from Janelle Hosel over there on St. Mary's. Well. It's a floor shop. All right, we got a good deal, but by the way, they, they threw in an extra bundle for free. Praise. So, uh, but the original palm trees back then, they came, they came from those huge trees called palm tree branches. Then they took out the branches. The Bible says they started cutting them and, and they started waving them at me. They might have been this size, maybe bigger, maybe smaller, but they began to wave them. As like I said, it was a sign of saying, our deliverer is here. Freedom is coming. Liberation is coming. And they thought, in their mindset, the majority of the people, he had a few followers that were, that were not superficial. But for the most part, there were followers in there that were superficial. There were followers that just wanted Jesus to overthrow the Roman Empire. They didn't want him to die. They weren't thinking about the cross. They were thinking about power. They were thinking about his kingdom. But they didn't understand that Jesus, first of all, had to die on the cross and give his life away. Because the Bible says that unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground, it cannot live. Amen. And they didn't understand that though. But in their mindset, they said, he's our king. They were half right. But he had to die on the cross before he was held as a king. But I love this event because, you know, Jesus took advantage of this moment. Anytime Jesus could minister to a crowd, he was going to do it. Yes. Right. Jesus, I'm telling you, is ready to change your life. He will take any moment possible mm -hmm. that he has. Anytime you share your walk with God, even on the lunch break, God can show up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 God will take any moment he can. After church, you know, by the way, you've heard me say this before. Church doesn't start till we leave. Amen. Right. So when we dismiss, that's when church really starts. Amen. When you go to Bill Miller's, I think you can go there now. Yes. Yes. When you go to Bill Miller's and you start having a conversation about Jesus, mm. not sports, mm -hmm. not anything that is temporary. Mm -hmm. When you start talking about Jesus, yes. God shows up. Amen. Yes, yes. And God showed up. He shows himself up at this moment mm. because he knew there was going to be a crowd. Mm. He knew there was going to be a packed audience. So he said, I'm going to show them who I am. Yeah. Not riding on a stallion. Come on. Not riding on a horse. Right. Not riding on a chariot of fire. Right. He comes on a lowly donkey. Showing us that the message of Palm Sunday is not rulership. It's not authority. It's not pride. It's not entertainment. It's not focus on me, myself, and I. He wanted everybody to know, riding on that lowly donkey, that the true message of Palm Sunday is to submit yourself unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Yes. So in this story of Palm Sunday, you can't really have a Palm Sunday without submission. As I studied this story, and I've preached this many times before, but Always the Lord shows me something fresh, something new that I have not yet seen. And as I was studying this in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John again, reading my commentaries and my books and uh, my notes, I was thinking about how that we wouldn't even have a Palm Sunday if it wasn't for the spirit of submission. Hallelujah. 
See, really, if you think about it, your walk with God as a believer begins the moment you submit to the will of God. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. And get help in Him, but that's a lot. Yes, amen. You'll never know the joy, the power, the presence of Jesus in your life. You'll never grow in the Lord still stuck on your will. Oh, yeah. If you're still holding on to things that you want to do, you're not being a true follower of Jesus oh, Christ. Right. Yes. I'm going to have to do away with myself, honey. Yeah. I don't think nobody wants to amen that. Amen. Oh, no. We want God to bless us. We want God to prosper us. But we just don't want to follow him. We just don't want to become a disciple of the Lord Jesus. God's really in that crowd. He's really looking for just a disciple. Looking for a follower of God. Because in just five days after Palm Sunday, that crowd, the majority that were saying, Hosanna mm -hmm. to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Yes. And Hosanna means save us right now. Right. Yes. In just five short days, they're going to be singing and shouting, crucify him. Mm -hmm. Crucify him. Mm -hmm. Because how many know it's going to take a sacrifice yeah. to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So I saw this in this Palm Sunday story that there cannot be Palm Sunday. Yeah, it's easy to wave the palm branches, but is he the Lord of your life? Is he the king of every kingdom of your soul? Hallelujah. I heard a story about this uh, man who was trying to um, was selling a he well, he, he needed a uh, lawnmower, but he didn't want to pay a lot of money for the lawnmower. Wow! So he went to a yard sale. Anybody ever got a lawnmower at a yard sale or a pawn shop? You know, you didn't really want to pay for a brand new one. You just needed one, to, you know, one that was okay. You were okay if it had little scratches and bumps. You just needed to cut your yard, the grass. So this guy goes to goes to a yard sale and he sees that they're they're selling a a, a lawnmower. And, uh, and he said, how much you want for the lawnmower? He said, oh, about, you know, $30. He said, oh, okay, really? Is it work? He said, yeah. I said, all right. So all you got to do is, he said, just, you know, pull that rope. Might have to do a little bit, you know, prime it. But boom, it'll, it'll, it'll work. He got guaranteed. Put some fuel in it, put some gas in it. It'll work. Takes it, buys it, goes home. The man starts pulling his lawn, primes it, and he starts pulling the rope. <laughs> Nothing. Then it starts a little, then a little bit. <laughs> And it dies. And then he does it again. He remembers the man said, all you got to do is just keep pulling the rope. Just keep pulling the rope. And so he said, it's not working. He tried it for now for about an hour. He said, man, I just got poked in my eye. This lawnmower doesn't work. I'm going back to that owner of that lawnmower. I'm going back because he lived in the neighborhood. He said, I'm going to go back over there. I'm going to get my money back. And I'm going to, you know, this is, you know, I, he's not going to trip me. And he goes back. He said, I thought you said this line won't work. He goes, it does. He said, well, I've been pulling the, the cord, that, that rope. He said, I've been pulling it and pulling it and pulling it, and it won't work. He said, oh, I forgot to tell you. You have to cuss at it. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, man, Jesus. He said, what do you mean? He goes, it's going to work. You got to keep pulling the rope, but you got to cuss at it while you're pulling it. <laughs> he said, he said, sir. I am a pastor of a church. <laughs> the guy who bought the lawn. He said, I don't remember what it means to cuss. God delivered me from profanity and cursing. He said, oh, don't worry about it. You just keep pulling. It'll come back. <laughs> oh, Jesus. How many of that we still got the flesh? Come on, somebody. Oh, man. Some of you are cussing our way. Coming to church this morning. Amen. Bless God. Oh, wow. We better just move on. I see smiling faces all over this one. I know it's under the blood, right? It's under the blood. Amen. Praise God. What is the Greek word? I want you to help me out on the screen in the back, please. I want to show you what the Greek word is, and I'm going to try my best to hurt. Uh, the Greek word is an interesting word for submission. This morning's message is the spirit of submission found on Palm Sunday. It is the Greek word hupotasso. I didn't say hippopotamus. <laughs> Sounds like hippopotamus. But it's actually the Greek word 
You can learn some, take your notes. Hupo tasso. What does that mean? It means three things. It means to arrange under. In other words, you're, 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 you're getting organized, but you're going to have to go under. Not higher, but you're going under. Okay. You're organizing your life underground, behind the scenes. You're, 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 you're doing things Amen. that cannot be noticed on the outside, but you're honoring God. I want you to know something, that God looks at everything that we do. Yes. Amen. 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 He looks at the way we behave ourselves at work. Right. He looks at the way we act at home. Right. He looks at the way we even treat our pets. Amen. <laughs> Amen. The Bible says that a righteous man loves his animal. Yes. Amen. When you love Jesus, you take care of your animals. Amen. You love your pets. Amen. So Amen. 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 You're a pet lover because you're a lover of Jesus. Yeah. It means to arrange an order. You know what it also means? It means to yield to advice. Are you willing to take advice from somebody? Every one of us in our relationship, we need to be in a relationship with people who know more than what we do. If you're the smartest one in your group, you're in the wrong group. You need to be around people that know a little bit more than you do. Oh, right. You need to be about, you need to get a mentor in your life. Yes. Someone that you can look up to, that can inspire you, that can encourage you. Watch this, that can speak into your life. Amen. Yes. I was thinking about this the other day. I was showing this to my wife. I said, you know, I wouldn't be the minister. I know I got a long ways to go. I got a lot of growing to do, but I've come a long way. I, 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 can, I can tell you that. And when I came to this church this morning, look how beautiful it looked on the outside. Look how beautiful it is on the inside. I said, man, Lord, Thank you. Amen. Because I remember preaching at Nile Moore Downs. Um, Nile Moore Downs. I remember setting up, you know, two little speakers and having to preach to yes. one person. Yes, yes. That's it. Brother Joe, he was faithful, but he came. And uh, it was him and his daughter. And they would come praise God. Yes. So if I can tell you anything, how God has helped me grow, is because I let people correct me. Amen. Amen. I let people speak into my life. I don't try to hide pertinent information from people to see what I can get away with. I tell, I show, and I learned this from Jesus because the Bible says that after, this is Holy Week, after the resurrection, oh my Lord, he goes to Thomas and he says, Thomas, here I am, don't you believe me? He said, prove it to me, Lord, unless I see the nail scar in your hands. He said, here it is. Right, 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 right. You see those pierces in my hands? If Jesus was not afraid to show his scars, how come we are? Amen. Amen. If Jesus was not afraid to show his pain, his scars, how come we try to act all religious, all spiritual? Yeah, yeah. I got it together. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody can see that you're, that you're all messed up. <laughs> Amen. Yes, Look at somebody and tell them, just keep it real. Yes, just keep it real. So, submission has to do with yielding yourself. Can you take advice from somebody? Because you'll never grow thinking you can do it all by yourself. And it simply means also, you see that, number three? What does that Greek word, hupotasso, mean? Submission. To obey. All right. Now, real, real quickly, stay with me. I saw in this story of Palm Sunday that there were several people and animals, too, that they were all obedient to God. They all submitted to the will and the purpose of God. And that's why we can call this today Palm Sunday. The first, I'm going to give you some groups of people that were submitted to God this Palm Sunday. Number one, can you put up there the disciples? The disciples. Matthew 21. Let's go there. Matthew 21 tells us that the first group of people that were submitted to the will of God, we find this in Matthew 21, verse 1, 2, and 3. Matthew 21, verse 1, 2, and 3. All right? It's now when they drew near to Jerusalem, they came to Bethage and the Mount of Olives. And Jesus sent what? Two disciples. Let's read on to verse 3. And he said, Go into the village opposite you. And immediately you will find a donkey tied and a coat with her. Loose them and bring them to me. 
And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say the Lord has need of them. And immediately he will send them. Amen. And the verses later in that story, that account, it says that they obeyed. The disciples obeyed. God told them to go to a village opposite you. See, sometimes God tells us to do things that are opposite the way we're thinking. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's different. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense sometimes. Yes, but God told me to move from Dallas, Texas, the home of the Cowboys, yeah. to come to San Antonio. San Antonio? I didn't even know what San Antonio was about. <laughs> now today, I consider myself... I consider myself a native San Antonian, even though I wasn't born here. Because this is like my home now. I found my wife here. When you find your wife, it's like home. Amen. 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 Started our family here. Amen. Amen. God had to pull me out of Dallas. That's right. Somebody's waving their wand there. <laughs> this is my home now. In fact, some time ago, I went to go visit Dallas. I got lost in Dallas. I got lost. I went up this freeway. I didn't even know, man. He wasn't there when I was young. And, uh, and it was like a tollway. I was like, oh my Lord, I didn't even have no money in my pocket. I don't even have my credit card. I said, I'm stuck like Chuck. But this is my home now. Sometimes God told, like you told me then, he said, I want you to go somewhere opposite. I want, I'm going to use you. I'm gonna, you're going to have a ministry uh, in another city that you weren't born in. I was like, wow. I always thought I was going to serve in the ministry in Dallas. I always thought I was going to minister over there. I thought I was going to be a pastor or a preacher or maybe a musician because I was into music more at that time. I thought maybe I was just going to stay there. In fact, I don't even know this, but I'm going to tell you this. We recorded, I was a part of a quartet, a real quartet. I was the drummer on the quartet. I tell that to my son, Josh. He said, nah, I don't believe you. <laughs> I, I got to prove it, but I can't find that tape cassette. Y'all remember tape cassettes back then? I went to a studio. We recorded. We would travel all over. I even went to California, Los Angeles, travel. We went to places like Wharton, Texas. Anybody heard of Wharton, Texas? Wharton. We would go to places uh, like, uh, I think it was called uh, Los Banos, California. And we would go to different places. Man, we traveled. I thought I was going to be the drummer for a famous quartet. <laughs> but God said, no, I want you to move to San Antonio. Amen. See, sometimes God tells you things that don't make sense, but just obey. As I said, tradition says Peter and John were the two disciples that, that did this. So remember, whatever God's asking you to do, be submitted to that. Yes. A real disciple obeys the Lord. That's why you're here today. Because the Bible says, do not forsake the assembly of ourselves together. God wants us to be in church. God commands us to be in the house of God. And I know there's some things that we got to get done with and we got to deal with. But for the most part, when the door of the house of God is open, my God, we need to say, I'll be there. I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. Yeah. Number two, you know what else was submitted that day? Not only the disciples, but there was a donkey. My, 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 my. There was a donkey that was submitted. Back to Matthew 21, look at verse 2. Matthew 21, 2. It says, what did, the, what did Jesus command the Peter and John to do? Go to the village, right? Opposite you, as we read earlier. Immediately you will find what? A donkey. And a coat. What? Two animals. A donkey tied and a colt. Now, this wasn't an Indianapolis colt. A little slow, that's all right. With her. Loose them. Are y'all reading your Bible? Yeah. It says loose them and bring them to me. So here we find the only gospel writer, Matthew, is the only one out of the four gospel writers of this account. They all write about this triumphal entry account. He's the only one that mentions two animals. All right? I'm trying to educate you. He's the only one. So what is it, Pastor? Was it one donkey or two donkeys? Well, if we understand the prophecy of Zechariah 9.9, can y'all put that up? Zechariah 9.9. We find that there was a prophecy spoken by the prophet Zechariah some 500 years before Palm Sunday. 500 years. Let me tell you something. If you can believe God for a prophecy that was spoken 500 years before, you can believe that every prophecy is going to be fulfilled. Amen? Amen. So, Zechariah, can you go there? Zechariah chapter 9, 
verse 9 tells us that there will be a prophecy that it will it will uh, it will show clearly there it is thank you rejoice greatly this is in Zechariah not Matthew but Zechariah 500 years before Matthew mm -hmm. rejoice greatly O daughter of Zion shout O daughter of Jerusalem behold your king is coming to you he is just and he has salvation lowly and riding on a donkey comma a colt the foal of a donkey. Yeah. So I believe, and there's some debate, but I believe that there were actually two animals that day that came with Jesus. But Jesus only sat on one. I believe this donkey right here, this one that I'm talking about, was the mother donkey. Because the Bible says that when the two disciples came, that they loosed them. So there was one, the mother, and the other was the child, which was a colt. So this mother donkey, I believe, was never, was never sat on by, G, by Christ, but went with her son. Because a foal was a colt that Jesus wrote on. It was called a foal or a colt. And it was a young male donkey. That's what a, 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 a colt was. A young male donkey. So more than likely, the donkey was the mom. Yes, yeah. mm. Mm -hmm. What does that tell us? It tells us the importance. Parents, if we want our children to obey God, mm -hmm. if we want our children to do right things, it starts with us. Amen. There comes a point in time. That's right, we're getting some great women. There comes a point in time yes. where you can't tell your children what to do anymore. Mm -hmm. Because they're going to rebel. Mm -hmm. Or they're going to yield. But ordering is not going to happen anymore. You're going to have to show by example yes, yes. how to live for Jesus. Yes, sir. I believe this is a type of parents, grandparents, we need to submit ourselves to God's will. Yes. And understand that our children really do not belong to us. They belong to God. Yes. We are merely students of our children. I believe it's important that we, as adults, it starts with us, church. It starts with our families. It, it, it starts with us leading because the Bible says if we're blind to the things of God, the blind will lead the blind. Yes, right. And I believe, why didn't, why didn't both animals come that day? Why didn't both animals come? Why didn't God just use the little donkey that he rode on? Because that's what he got on. He got on a young donkey. Because he wanted us to know that I want to be the Lord, not only of the donkey, I want to be the Lord of this family. I want this family to be, I want mama to be touched. I want daddy to be touched. Yeah. I want the grandparents to be touched by God. Mm. Picture the young donkey riding Jesus on that donkey. But then following that foal, that colt, was the mother donkey. But she had no one to sit on her. You know what that tells us? That is, one Bible commentator says, that's a picture of when Israel rejected the Messiah. That one was connected to Jesus. One donkey was attached to the will of God. One donkey was serving the Lord and the purpose of God, right. while the other was empty. Don't let that be said of you and me, that we do not just let God be nothing in our lives, but that we let him rule and reign and govern every part of our lives. Amen. Amen. So that donkey was submitted. The Bible tells us that one day Hannah couldn't have children. She was barren. And the other wife of Elkanah, her husband, kept nagging at her and making fun of her. You don't have a child. Finally she said, God, I'm tired of this. She made a vow to the Lord. You know what she said? Hannah said, God, if you give me a child, I'll give him back to you. And she did. 
The Bible says that she wept and she was bitter in his soul. And finally, God gave her Samuel, a mighty prophet of the Lord. But after she weaned him, the Bible says she went to the tabernacle and gave him back to the Lord. See, that mother knew she belonged to God and that child belonged to the Lord. Amen. And so the third, the third person I saw in this story that was submitted to God was not only the donkey, but the young donkey. Remember, there were two animals. There was a colt, the foal, and then there was the mother donkey behind them, coming down, riding on the streets of Jerusalem. The young donkey. What does that mean? That means, I don't know if we got any young people here today. Amen. We got any young people here today? Glory. God's hand is on the young people. Yes. God wants to do incredible things in this yes. generation. Yes, sir. I don't know what they call it, Generation X, whatever the millennial generation. I don't know what this generation is called, but I'm here to tell you God's hand is on this generation. God's hand is on our young, young people. Praise God. Mark 11, you don't have to go there, but verse 2, it says that it was a cult. It was a cult, a cult that submitted to the will of God. A young donkey. This donkey, the young donkey, had never been ridden before. I want to let you know, there's some young people here today. There's some young people watching me by television. You don't know how to do this church thing. When I said dress up for Easter, you're like, what? I don't know what it means to dress up in church. That's okay. It's okay if you weren't brought up in church. We love you anyway. Because God's hand is upon you even yeah. if you never grew up in church. Yeah. God's going to anoint you even if you came from a bad background. God's going to anoint you even if you don't know how to, you don't even know what Sunday school is. Yes, yes. Don't worry about it. God's hand is on you. God can use you. Amen. Like that young donkey. He's never been written before. Maybe you don't know the hymns of the church. A hymn? What's a hymn? You know what a hymn is? It's a song about him. Amen. That's a good way to remember him. And by the way, we're going to do some good hymns this week. I heard we got some hymns coming up Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. It's going to be good. All right. Just real quickly, I'm going to move on. First Peter five five. First Peter five five. I saw that not only was the donkey, the mother, submitted to the will of God. Not only were the disciples submitted to the will of God on Palm Sunday. But guess what? Even this young colt, this young donkey was submitted. You know what that tells me? Young people, you can serve the Lord too. Amen. This gospel is not just for the seniors. Yes. Citizens, it's for the high school seniors too. Yeah, man. Come on. Right, right. Likewise, you younger people, you younger people, you foals, you colts, you little donkeys that have never been ridden on, Submit yourself to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Amen. Yes. Yes. That's why parents, the Bible says, to not despise the young people. Yeah. It even tells us as fathers to not provoke our children, mm -hmm. but to bring them up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. Why? Because the hand of God is on your teenagers. Yes. The hand of God is on your sons and on your daughters. Amen. God used a young donkey that day to let us know, I want to use young people. Amen. I want to use people that have been abused. Amen. People that have been uh, uh, had some bad trauma experiences in life. Yes. I want to use some young people that, that church people have abandoned. Amen. And pastors say, ah, oh, God can never use them. Amen. You better be careful. Because God will take somebody out of the bar. God will take somebody out of the game. God will take somebody that knows nothing about God. Save them, sanctify them, fill them with the Holy Ghost, and make them a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's right. Not only were that donkey submitted, not only was that young donkey submitted to God, not only were the disciples, but number four, the donkey's owners were even submitted to God. Say, so what do I mean? Let's find this in Luke 19.33. It's in another account of the same story. Same story, but 
just a different narrative, different perspective, if you will, account from Luke now, who was a doctor, who was a physician. And in Luke 19, 33, this is what it says. As they were loosing the coat, the owners of it said to them, why are you loosing the coat? Verse 34. And they said, because the Lord has need of him. A couple more verses, please. And then they brought him to Jesus. And they threw their own clothes on the coat. And they set Jesus on him. So in other words, there was no fighting, no rejection, no, wait a minute, you're taking my coat. They cooperated. Amen. The donkey's owners didn't put up a fight. They said, God, if you said we need him, if the disciples said you need him, God, Jesus needs him. Whew, it ain't my donkey. It belongs to God. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Yes, yes. How many don't know that your house doesn't belong to you? It belongs to God. Amen. Amen. How many know that your car doesn't belong to you? It belongs to Jesus. Yes. How many know your bling bling doesn't belong to you? It belongs. How many know your husband doesn't belong to you, wives? They belong to God. How many know that husbands, your wives don't belong to you? So stop getting jealous. <laughs> belong to God. Yes. Let me help you out. You can't own what you see. Amen. Well, Ooh, that's good news right there. I, 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 would, I would write that down. You can't own what you see. Just because you see a nice looking man doesn't mean he's going to be yours. Mm -hmm. You see a nice looking woman doesn't mean that's yours. Right. Just because you see a nice TV, finish making the payments and then you can say it's yours. <laughs> Don't be saying and bragging. Woo! Did you see my car? Come on, Pastor. Will you lay hands on my car? Uh, your car or the bank's car? <laughs> your car or the mortgage car? Yeah. Come on, look at my beautiful house. Your house or the mortgage company's house? Yeah. Come on now, let's be real. Yeah. Make it real. Ooh, Pastor, look at my boyfriend. I want you to meet. I want you to meet my boyfriend. Your boyfriend. <laughs> your boyfriend. <laughs> See, sometimes we try to take ownership of what doesn't belong to us. Amen. In yes. fact, look at this scripture. Let me help you out. 1 Corinthians 4. 1. Everybody doing all right still? Yes. We're doing good? All right. 1 Corinthians 4. 1 and 2. Oh, those owners, they didn't argue with Peter and John. They didn't fight and they didn't say, nope, he's my coat. I bought this coat. I went to the stockyard and I got this one. Mm -mm. You know how much money I paid for that coat? And you want me to give it to you? See, because those owners knew something about the kingdom of God. Amen. That we don't own anything. Yes. We're just stewards. Yes. 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 Mm. Like, I, you know, I used to think when I used to preach and everybody shouting and waving palm branches at me, you know, I used to think I was preaching good. But when you can hear a pin drop, I know I'm really preaching really good. Because it's hidden home. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ. What are we? We're servants. And not only that, we're stewards of the mysteries of God. Mm. If God blessed you with a beautiful home, a beautiful house, beautiful car, beautiful husband, beautiful wife, beautiful job, all you need to do is say, God, to you be the glory, Amen. to be the honor of the prayer. Yes. Because I know, God, you can easily take this away. Just as much as you gave it to me, you can take it away. Amen. How many don't have lived long enough to know jobs are not permanent? That's right. How many don't have lived long enough to know relationships are not permanent? Come on. How many don't live a little bit long in this world and you know, bling, bling, fades away? Amen. After a while, that suit gets tight. Well. That dress don't fit no more. Oh, let me move on. Those jeans. Oh, Jesus. Now, come on. How many have noticed? You, you, you said, no, no. I, 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 nothing's changed. You need to look at your high school pictures. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't think nothing's changed, you need to go and scroll back your high school yeah, pictures. Yeah, yeah. And look at the before and after. I wish I had a witness on money. Right. We don't own anything. When God says, 
give your offerings, give your time. You don't argue with God. No, nope, I need it. That's my light bill. That's right. You wouldn't even have light if God didn't give you a job. Yes. 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 My Lord. Yes. Why are you holding on to something that God gave you to? Yes. Gave you to? Yes. All you are is a steward. Yes. Yes. That went over real well. Yes. Amen. As if I can wind it down. A couple more. You know what else I saw in this story that was submitted to God? Those crowd, that crowd that was at the distant, they were distant. They came from all over that known world, not just Jerusalem. Many of them didn't call Jerusalem their home. So guess what? They came from distant lands. But guess what? They wanted to get close to Jesus. Maybe that describes you. See, I learned from Pastor Rick Warren. I, I went to his book, The Purpose Driven Church and The Purpose Driven Life. I read them both. Powerful books. And he talks about that in every church. Listen to this. In every church, you got the crowd, you got the congregation, and you got the core. Yes, yes. And you got the committed. Mm -hmm. You got the crowd. It's just they come to church, you know, they don't usually come on time. They just come, checking out the pastor, checking out the screen. They don't bring their Bibles. <laughs> nothing like that. They don't tithe. They don't give offerings. Maybe a dollar or two. And they're at a distance. They're watching church at a distance. Mm. They're watching church. See what really is going on with this pastor. What's going on with Livingstone Family Church? Mm. They're watching us at a distance. And then Pastor Warren talks about you got the, the crowd then at some point can turn into the congregation. Now they get involved. Now they want to be a part of the church. Now they call themselves members of the church. And by the way, we only got one requirement to be a member at LFC. You want to know what it is? Be saved. Because if you're good enough for God's family, you're good enough for this family. Come on, somebody. I said, if you're good enough for God's family, you're good enough for me and my wife to be a part of this church. But then that congregation turns into, a, instead of a little bit backwards, but it's the committed. Now you start getting committed. So we went from a crowd we went from a congregation. Uh -huh. Now we're getting committed to this. Amen. Now we're coming every Sunday. Now we're coming every Wednesday. Now we're even stepping into prayer services. Mm. Now we want to help us an usher. Now we want to, you know, uh, help on the praise team. Now we want to do pray for somebody. Now, now we're getting committed to this thing. Yes, yes. And then you got that fourth group, but you got the core now. Mm -hmm. The core are those people. That really run the church. It's called the Barito principle. The Barito principle is you focus on the 20% that will have the productivity of 80% of the corporation or the church. Yeah, yeah. If you focus on the 20% core, it produces 80% results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Barito principle. Oh, did I scare y'all? <laughs> Can y'all handle me this morning? Yes. That's what John Maxwell calls the Barito principle. You focus on the core 20% and they magnify to 80% productivity of the whole company, of the whole corporation. In other words, you don't focus on just the crowd. Mm -hmm. You focus on the people that are giving it their all. Yes. And then they have the influence and the potential to make that church grow. So why did I say all that? I don't know. <laughs> no, you know why I said all that? That God can take you from the crowd yes, yes. and bring you into the core. Yes, yes, yes. God can take you from just watching what's going on mm -hmm. and being a spectator mm -hmm. and getting your hands wet. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. But it's up to you. Amen. It's up to me. Yes. God uses those at a distance. They all came. They all waving the. They all all of a sudden. Wow! I want a branch. I want a palm branch. Come on. Amen. And you know what else they were doing? Now, we didn't give y'all this this morning. They were taking off their clothes. <laughs> now, nobody take off your clothes. <laughs> and just kind of just throw it. I know it's a nice suit and everything, nice coat. But just kind of put it there for just a moment. Right on the road, yeah, they were throwing their coats. They were throwing their jackets. They were throwing their polo shirts. Young people, 
They were throwing their Michael Jordan shoes. The LeBron James shirts. Ah. The Boys in the Hood shirts. They were taking them off. Oh. The San Antonio Spurs shirts. The Dallas Cowboy caps. Ah, did I get your attention? The Houston Texans. We got any Houston Texan fans? They were throwing their jerseys on the on the ground. You can you can pick it up and throw it over there. Praise God. That's what they were doing. The Bible says they started spreading their clothes on the road. The crowd got involved, and God can take a nobody and make them a somebody. God can take a man or a woman out of the crowd and use them for the glory of God. I said, God can use you. He can take you out of the crowd and bring you into the congregation and bring you into a committed man of God and bring you into the core. Glory to God. God can take the multitudes. Job 3.14 says that there are many, many multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. So don't get discouraged. You might be looking. You might have been coming to church for a while, just looking on the outside. Not really doing much, but hearing, taking notes. That's, that's good. Keep doing that. Yeah. But eventually, God's going to cause you to wave those palm branches. Yeah. Eventually, you're going to be taking off your coats yeah. yes, sir. and spreading all over the ground and the floor. Yeah. And say, Hosanna yeah. to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. We also find just two more. We also find submitted to the will of God with the debris, the rocks, the stones. Look at Luke 19, 39 and 40. Luke 19. Let's go back to Luke's account of Palm Sunday or the triumphal entry. Luke 19, 39. Y'all enjoying this message this morning? Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. You say, why do you call it debris? Let me show you. It says in some of the Pharisees, this was on Palm Sunday, that crowd's waving those branches, right? Those palm branches. And the Pharisees got mad and called to him from the crowd. They're, they're trying to get Jesus out in the corner from the crowd. He said, teacher, rebuke your disciples. Ah, so what does that tell you? We're talking about just Peter and James or Peter and John or just the 12. You know what he's talking about? He's talking about the whole crowd. Because the whole crowd started praising God. See, God turned that crowd into a congregation. God was turning that crowd into a committed group of people. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so he tells them, the Pharisees rebuke them, and he answered and said, I tell you this, that if they should keep quiet or silent, the stones yes. would immediately cry out. That's why your Bible says, let everything that have breath praise, praise the Lord. Amen. How many know that it's a privilege to worship God? Amen. It's a privilege to praise the Lord. Amen. And if we don't take that privilege, and we don't take that opportunity, then God will just use some stones and some rocks to praise Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is going to get the praise. Yes. God is going to get the glory. Yes. Somewhere, somehow, if not here, if we don't do what God's called us to do, God will raise up another church to do it. Right. If, if I don't preach what God puts in my heart to do, then God will just raise up somebody else that has the heart of David Amen. to do the will of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a privilege to serve God. Yes. I tell the Lord every time, ministers, this morning, you ministers are going to help us preach. I tell, I tell the Lord every time I get behind this sacred desk, I say, Lord, thank you for the opportunity. Amen. Amen. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes, yes. I don't deserve to preach. That's right. I'm the least of all the apostles. That's right. Amen. But I thank you for the privilege yes. Yes. to preach the word of God. Amen. When you have that heart, God will never, ever stop using you. Amen. Amen. God will always use you. Right. God will right. always right. anoint you. Right. God will always you. Right. It's a privilege. Yes. Thank you. you say, but the rocks, I don't see no debris, Pastor. Oh, uh, can, I, can I just jump, just, I just want to jump ahead. Pretend that, everybody just pretend it's Easter Sunday. Now don't, don't pop my head with the cascajones. <laughs> Let me fast forward. 
Jesus rose from the dead early Sunday morning, Easter Sunday. And uh, the last thing that he said, the last words, the last saying that he said of the seven sayings, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Yes, sir. And as soon as he gave up his last breath, Hallelujah. he gave up. His heart stopped beating for the last time on the cross. Excruciating pain for six hours on that cross. The Bible says, he said, Father, I commit my hands into your spirit. And the Bible says he gave up the ghost. You know what happened? One of the things, I can't tell you all things because it's not Easter yet. But you know one of the things that happened when he yielded the Holy Spirit? The rocks split. Yeah. Right. When he gave up the ghost, yeah. Yeah. you could hear.
even the death of the cross. Jesus was submitted to the Father's will. He didn't let the crowd shake his faith. Crucify! Crucify! Mm -hmm. How many of there were moments when Jesus could have gotten off that cross? Right, right. Yeah. Even in the garden when they arrested him in the garden of Gethsemane. Yes, yes. He could have called a band of angels, the Bible says, yes. to rescue him. Mm -hmm. Peter was trying to protect him. He cut off a soldier's ear. Mm -hmm. Jesus, last healing miracle, he puts that ear back on that soldier's yes. side and he healed him. Jesus could have saved himself on that cross. Yes, he could have. Yes. Let me ask you today. Are you walking worthy of the price that Jesus paid for you? Can Jesus say by looking at your life today, watching my Facebook, can Jesus say, looking at your life, saying, that is the fruit of my reward? Can Jesus look at our lives, church, and say, it was worth me dying on that cross? Because that's my servant. That's my son. That's my daughter that loves me. The king is coming. Praise and worship team. Musicians, you can make your way back to the front. How many of were blessed this morning by the message? Amen. God's called us to be submitted to the Lord, to his work, to the call of God in your life. I heard a story about a, uh, about a lady and her husband who they had a wonderful opportunity to meet the Queen of England one day. This couple was not famous. This couple was not um, anything really that had special notoriety. But they were at a ball in Scotland. And they had the wonderful opportunity to meet the Queen of England. And the Queen of England was so touched by their heart. The lady's name was Sylvia and her husband. The queen was so happy to meet them, that wonderful couple, that you know what she did? She invited them back. She said, I'd like to go visit you at your house. This is the queen of England. I want you to, I want to go to your house and visit you. And when she had got the message, Sylvia, her heart started beating. Her heart started racing. She was filled with worry and anxiety and she didn't know what to do. She said, honey, we gotta get the house nice and neat. We gotta get, make sure everything looks beautiful. The Queen of England is coming to visit us real soon. She started cleaning the house. She started detailing everything, wiping things down, wiping the dust off, cleaning all the appliances and sweeping and mopping the floor vacuum. She did everything she could. She was filled with nervousness and worry. She started cleaning with precision. And she wondered, man, in just a few moments, the Queen of England is going to step into my home. What is she going to think? You know what she also did? You know what Sylvia did? She even bought some flowers. She put flowers on the table. She wanted to put flowers on the table to welcome the Queen of England to her home. Right? She's watching, she's looking at her watch. It's 12 o'clock, by the way, because you're taking medicine. And she looked at her watch and said, she'll be here in about five minutes. That's what she told us. In about five minutes, she's gonna be here. All of a sudden, she feels the wonderful, sweet presence of God over her life. Because Sylvia was a believer in Christ. Sylvia loved the Lord Jesus and her husband. All of a sudden, she feels this overwhelming peace and presence of God. Five minutes away from the Queen of England to step into her home. And she felt the Lord reminding her. She felt the Lord speak to her in her heart. 
not audibly, but in her heart, she felt the Lord saying, I'm the King of Kings, and I'm the Lord of Lords. There's only one King that your heart should be beating for. And she began to calm down. And the Lord spoke to her again in her heart and said, unlike the Queen of England, I'm with you every single day. I'm guiding you every day. I'm in your home every day. I'm in your heart every day. I'm the king of glory. She finally felt peace. She finally calmed down. How many of you feel that peace right now? Just calm down. And guess what? She said out loud to her husband, the queen of England, about ready to step into her home. She says, oh, I'm not worried about it. Puts away the mop, puts away the broom. I'll leave it the way it is. After all, she said, it's only the queen. There's only one we're going to wave to. There's only one we're going to worship. Everybody stand to your feet. Paul said, and I believe 1 Timothy 6.15, he said, Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I want you to picture yourself with your palm branch in your hand. I want you to picture yourself in that crowd that day on Palm Sunday. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus riding on that donkey, followed by the mother donkey. The crowd waving those palm branches, saying Hosanna to the son of David. Just a little chorus, and we're going to sing. The king is coming. Praise God, I know he's coming for me.
Hosanna, Hosanna. You are the Messiah. You are the Lord of heaven. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, watching by Facebook and live stream, say this simple prayer. Close your eyes and bow your heads and open your mouth and say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I give you my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. Wash me in your precious blood. I believe you died on that cross and you rose again on that third day to give me victory. Give me victory. And I accept you. And I accept you right now. Right now. As my Lord. As my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Come on, if you pray that with all your heart, you are a child of God now. You are redeemed. You're on your way to heaven. Let's sing it again. Oh, the King is coming. sound 
coming on a white horse. Amen. And guess what? We're coming with him on a white horse too. Amen. Praise God. Well, we all blessed this morning. Amen. Before we go, let's pray for our Facebook family. And uh, all those that watch us, stretch your hands towards that camera. Amen. Father, we love you so much. Bless, Lord, all those that are watching us by Facebook, by live stream. I pray, Lord, that not only them, but they would share this word and share this service with someone else. Father, we ask that you continue to bring healing and strength and grace and mercy to all of our family members that are still recovering with any sickness or any problems or any struggles in their life, whatever it may be, Lord. I pray, Lord, that they would recover, be restored, and bless them, Lord, the only way you know how to bless them, Lord. Thank you for today's service, and bless our Holy Week. Bless our Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night service. And as we get rest on Saturday, we come back on Easter. Lord, let us just rejoice Resurrection Sunday morning. Lord, we love you so much. Bless even our prayer meeting tomorrow. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone say amen. amen. Well, I'll leave you with this. We still have some flyers. Uh, for the uh, Holy Week, if you'd like to pass them out to your friends, co-workers, give it to your co-worker. Give it to your friends. Give it to your neighbors. And uh, invite somebody. How many of y'all invite, can invite somebody this week to come to church? Amen. Invite somebody. And we're going to have a good time. We love you. God bless you. You're dismissed this morning. In Jesus' name.